my life have I ever not been really scared? But fear is a great motivating factor. And as in the words of my favorite philosopher, Van Halen, you might as well jump. <laughs> Thank you, old people. I didn't have a plan B. Because if I had a plan B, it would have been too easy to stay there. Some of you have been living in plan B a very long time because somebody told you that there's no plan A for you. Some of you are even living a plan C because you don't even think you're capable of even dreaming about a plan A. There's a dream inside of you. There's desires inside of you. There's a call inside of you. And the world is going, are you kidding? Who are you to do that? Who do you know? It's all about who you know. What are you gonna do? And some of you have just believed that for so long that you've let life pass you by with survival and hard things come and it just pushes you further and further back. And we as women, we're the worst because the, we're the best at lifting up other people's dreams and putting our dreams off to the side. So my challenge to you is to think about what your life would look like if starting today, you started to pursue your plan A. And if you don't know anybody to have coffee with, you can learn, you have YouTube. You can learn anything on YouTube. I'm awesome at origami, you should see my snowflakes. Stop watching the cat videos in the military family reunions and, and crying. You can learn. We have no excuse not to learn. So I was in LA, I was just pursuing my craft and I was working in film and TV a little bit and my high school called me back to be a special guest at my high school. And immediately I was like, let's get this cheerleading uniform, let's do this, you know, I was 25. And um, I'm on stage, I walk in, there's 2,500 kids and all of my insecurities. I'm freaking out, I'm like, did I wear the right jeans? And it's just, because high school, well, they scare me to this day. And I'm being interviewed by this drama teacher, my drama teacher, and he's very dry and sarcastic and he thought he was being funny. So in front of the whole school, he goes, you know, I don't really remember you being particularly a standout in the talent department. Who knew that you were gonna have this success, right? And I'm a stand-up comedy performer and all the high school kids, 2,500, start chanting, do your act, do your act, like a mob. And I don't do comedy for high schoolers. I'd rather stab myself with a fork. I just don't, they don't get me like, my sarcasm, you know, I have a joke. I'm like, I'm here, my kids are in the car. And then they all go look in the car. Okay, so <laughs> you know that I would never leave my kids in the, one kid in the car, not two. And so I had to do it and I stood on stage and I walked out there and I just prayed that the Lord would strike me with lightning. And so I did it happen and I, I did a couple jokes and they laughed. And then the room is silent because this big football player guy in a varsity jacket, he raises his hand and he looks at me and he goes, I just have one question, and the room's totally silent. He goes, will you go to prom with me? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and I went, and we had such a good time. And uh, I didn't know that was illegal. Um, it just goes to show you that there's plenty of people in our life that are going to tell us, like, I didn't expect that from you. Make your life about surprising people. You don't have to be the class sweetheart. You don't have to be the favorite. Be your own favorite.